So the last thing to check for early effect is how it actually affects or how it changes our small signal model, right? So whatever we have discussed up to now was about the DC analysis and like how the uh, the transistor as a voltage controlled current source changes. But then does early effect uh, change our small signal model? Well, it as a matter of fact, it, it seems to be doing a big, it, it seems to have a big impact there. And we have to actually discuss that. So number one is about, the first thing we, we're gonna discuss is the parameters that we already know, GM and RPi. And the good news is that they're not gonna change. So if you remember, GM was modeling the rate of change in the collector current over the rate of change uh, of the base emitter current, the uh, base emitter voltage, right? Again, we're talking about the change and we're talking about small changes. So delta IC over delta VBE, when they're small enough that we can even call them derivatives, right? We can use derivatives. So if this is the new current equation that I have, so, well, this is not the new current, this is actually the derivative. So if my current equation is actually IC equal to IS, e to the power of VBE over VT times one plus VCE over VA. If I take the derivative of this equation with respect to base emitter voltage, you can see that this term is not going to really make any difference because it's not a function of uh, VPE. So what happens is that, well, I'm going to have 1 over VT because of this exponential term coming out of the exponential. The derivative of exponential is going to be just an exponential. So I'm going to get a 1 over VT times the same expression that I had before. And I know that since this is this big thing is actually IC, then, well, GM is just going to be IC over VT, right? And well, this is the expression that I had for GM before. So nothing changed about GM. That's the good news. Great. So I don't have to do any any changes for my GM calculation. Uh, the other piece of good news is that, well, our pi was dependent on beta and GM. Beta is actually a fundamental property of my transistor. It has nothing to do with any of these stuff. It has something to do with the, well, uh, doping level of emitter and base. So it's not going to change by early effect. And GM is not, GM didn't change, so beta over GM won't change. So I'm gonna have the nice uh, RPi that I had from before, okay? So, which is basically beta VT over IC, or since I know that IB is equal to IC divided by beta, I can write this as VT over IB as well, okay? Now, the last thing that I wanna talk about is how it actually affects the, the change in the collector emitter voltage is going to change the current of collector or the current of the emitter. Because remember the way that we developed this small signal model like this was that our principle, if you go back to last week's slides, you will see that our principle was that I'm gonna perturb the voltage between every two terminal while keeping the other terminal constant and then look at how this perturbation affected the current in each terminal. Right? And last time when we actually perturbed collector voltage or collector emitter voltage and kept the base constant or kept the emitter constant and changed the collector base voltage, because we know that this is a perfect current source, any changes in, in the collector voltage didn't really matter. Right? Now we really know that, well, it does matter a little bit. And the, the reason is the early effect. So what happens is that if I actually change the collector emitter voltage, what happens is that I'm going to have this delta IC. I'm going to have a little bit of change in the current, right? And how much how much change I'm talking about? Well, this is the amount of change. Delta VCE over VA plus one times. So like basically what I wrote here, this expression is really the expanded. If I want to expand it, it would be IS exponential of VBE over VT times one plus VCE over VA plus delta VCE over VA. Okay, so this is the part that is basically resulted from the little change, like this list little change in the VCE is causing this delta IC. Okay, so this delta IC then is going to be, if I multiply just this term by the exponential term, I'm going to get this, this expression. And then if I want to know, well, I want to know how much changes in the IC happened due to the change in the VCE or vice versa, how much changes 
uh, oh, the inverse of that. Because, and I'm going to tell you in a moment why I care about the inverse of that. So maybe I should write the expression first for the delta IC over delta, uh, delta VC. So delta IC over delta VCE is going to be um, IS exponential of VBE over VT divided by VA. Okay, therefore, delta VCE over delta IC is going to be, well, the inverse of that fraction. And then I know that IS e to the power of VBE over VT, I can call that IC. So in the end, this is going to be equal to just VA over I IC. Now, I told you that I'm going to tell you in a moment why I care about the inverse. I, I don't look at the delta IC over delta VC. I'm going to look at delta VCE over delta IC. The reason I do that is that if you think about it, I'm talking about the change in the collector emitter voltage because of the change, or well, more intuitively, let's 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 scratch that. I'm talking about the change in the collector emitter current, current that is flowing from the collector and goes all the way to emitter, due to change in the collector emitter voltage. Right? So if I talk about the really I'm talking about two different terminals, collector and emitter, and let's put a box here for now as the element. And I'm talking about the fact that the current flowing through this, between these two terminals, is has a relationship with the voltage across these two terminals. I know this, that I can actually model this element as a resistor if I find the relationship between voltage over current, right? And since I'm talking about small signals, so like basically, if I had a relationship between VCE and IC, I could have called that the resistor. But since I'm talking about the changes, so it would be delta VC over delta IC, and I'm going to call that R0, right? So I'm just basically, what I'm trying to do here is that, uh, remember when I did the, the, the calculations for the GM, in the end I said that, well, this is really showing the change in the IC over the change in the VBE. So I can actually show this as a voltage controlled current source because it's showing that, and I called it the trans conductance because conductance because it was a current over voltage and trans because, well, this was talking about the base emitter and that was talking about the collector or collector emitter. But here I'm talking about collector emitter for both of them. So it's not really trans, it's just conductance. And then I can actually flip that conductance and call that a resistance. Right? So I'm going to model that as a resistance between the collector and emitter in my small signal model. So this R0, you can see that it's connected to collector on one side and emitter to the other side. And I'm going to, uh, and I found the value for that resistor to be the early voltage over the current, the DC current of my uh, collector terminal. Okay? One last question. Uh, small note here is that you might have noticed that I didn't write equal here. I wrote almost equal because I kind of cheated here when I said this is IC, right? This expression, the denominator, because uh, again, if you go back and think about it, all of these discussions started because this wasn't IC, because I had this extra term because of the early effect, right? But, well, based on the example that we saw in the previous slide, we can kind of approximate that, that, well, the early effect is just going to change this to, like, by, by at most 10%, the maximum 10%. So, yeah, this is not IC. This is an approximation of IC, but it's 90% correct. So, like, this is a 90% approximation, 90 plus percent approximation of the actual value of R0. And that's good enough for us as engineers, because at the end of the day, we're just doing uh, hand calculations. In reality, when you actually want to go and build these, build circuits using transistors, you actually have to use, uh, you do these hand calculations to, to get a good idea about what should be the voltages and currents in your circuit, but then to precisely set every single parameter, you should use circuit simulators and where they actually model transistors using numerical uh, models and basically, they calculate all different effects up to like fifth order, sixth order. Okay. Okay. Just a quick recap or summary thus far. And uh, so that we know where we are. Uh, first, we started with this transistor. Everything was perfect. We 
a bias that in the active region, meaning that the base emitter junction was forward biased and the base collector junction was reverse biased. We saw that why do we have a current from all the from the emitter to the collector and why that current is actually ex has an exponential relationship with the base emitter voltage. Then we modeled this, the large signal model that we came up with uh, looked like this. So we had just a diode and a uh, voltage controlled current source with a, the exponential relationship between VBE and IC. And then we also talked about the fact that the base current is actually one over beta times uh, the collector current and the emitter current is the addition of the two. Uh, this was the IV characteristics, and then we saw that because this is a current source, it doesn't matter what is the VC that we have, I always have a constant IC as long as I don't have early effect. And the small signal looked like this. Then we introduced the early effect here, and we realized that, well, it's not a perfect current source. I have a little bit of slope on this line, and this, this exponential is still going to be exponential, but, uh, well, it's going to be a little bit different, right? Actually, it's going to be the other way. Okay, so I'm going to have a, the most the more important change is actually here. So I'm going to have a little bit of a slope here. So my collector current has a little bit of depend, dependency on the on the collector emitter voltage. And the effect of that in the uh, in the large signal model was just basically um, I C being equal to I S exponential of V B E over V T times this 1 plus VCE over VA, okay? And then in this small signal model, we saw that the effect is this R0 that we found it, okay? So, and it was basically VA over IC, okay? So, again, you can see another reason that, like, whenever you want to do a small signal model, first you need to know IC. First you need to actually do the DC analysis, and then you can actually get started with the small signal analysis, okay?